Welcome to the Cross on the Hill here in West Virginia. Here's another sermon for you today. Today's sermon is Crucifixion of Jesus. What happened? We all know that Jesus went to the cross and He was crucified for our sins that we might have eternal life. He was the ultimate sacrifice, Jesus was. He was a lamb slain for us all. In the Old Testament, they had to give a, uh, a sacrifice, a lamb. They would take it in to the priest, and the priest would uh, put it on the altar and cut its throat, and that was a, a sacrifice for our sins. It was just a covering. But when Jesus went to the cross, He done away with the priest because Jesus became our priest. We, there, we don't need a, a, a lamb to cover our sins anymore because Jesus paid the ultimate price. Crucifixion of Jesus. What happened? The crucifixion takes place at a location called Calvary or Golgotha. It is believed to be the place where King David buried the head of Goliath, who he slew in victory against the Philistines. That was that giant that uh, David slew, Goliath. He slew him with just a slingshot and a rock, and then he cut his head off with his own sword. And if you got God with you, God will work with you like that. He's a miracle-working God. But the greatest victory this world could ever have is what Jesus done on Calvary or Golgotha. Back in Isaiah, in the Old Testament, it, it, uh, it, Isaiah prophesies of what's going to happen. In chapter 53, verse 1, it says, Who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root of dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness. And when he shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. So it says here, Jesus is just an ordinary person. His, uh, his looks are no great looks. He's just an ordinary person. Uh, verse 3, it says, He is despised and rejected of all men, a man of sorrow and acquaintance with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our grief, grieves and carried our sorrow. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed." Jesus went to the whipping post for us that we might be healed. He took 39 stripes upon His back. That covers every disease and every sickness there is. 39 of them. And Jesus, He took them all upon His back for you because He loves you. No greater love a man has than to give his own life for others. Verse 6, it says, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to slaughter, as a sheep before his shear is dumb. So he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living, for the transgression of my people was he stricken. See, Jesus, this was predicted way back in Isaiah what would happen to Jesus. 
in Matthew chapter 27, verse 7, it says, Therefore, when the, this was when this was when they brought Jesus before Pilate. And there, there was no sin or no fault in Jesus. But the Jewish people wanted to crucify Jesus because they didn't believe He was the Messiah. They was looking for a king to come and be their Messiah. But Jesus came as a lamb. He was a lamb in a manger. Matthew chapter 27, verse, verse 17. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will ye that I release unto you, Barabbas or Jesus, which is called Christ? Barabbas, he was a robber. He was a thief. He was a, he was a man of sin. And Jesus was a perfect man with no sin in him. For he knew that f from envy they had delivered him. When he was set down on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him, saying, Have nothing to do with this just man, for I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. See, God dealt with Pilate's wife there telling that, that uh, they shouldn't crucify Jesus because uh, Jesus is the Lamb of God and, and God was dealing with her. But the chief priest and the elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor answered and said unto them, Whether of the twain will ye that I release unto you? They said, Barabbas. Chapter 22, verse 22 said, Pilate said unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? They all said unto him, Let him be crucified. And the governor said, Why? What evil has he done? But they cried out more, saying, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he could, could prevail nothing, but, but that rather... Uh, turmoil was made he took water and washed his hands before the multitude saying i am innocent of this blood of of the blood of this just person see you do it then answered all the people and said his blood be on us and on our children and that statement right there, it says, His blood be on us and on our children. That's why the Jewish people have suffered all these years. The Holocaust and everything that they went through is because of what they they done to Jesus. They said, let His blood be upon them and their children. And uh, they've paid an awful price for what they've done to Jesus. Then released he Barabbas unto them, and when he had scorned Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governors took Jesus unto the common hall, and gathered unto, unto him the whole band of soldiers, and they stripped him, and put on a sack, on a scarlet robe. And when they had planted a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a reed in his hand, and they bowed the knee before and said, mocking him, saying, Hail, the King of the Jews. And they spit upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head. And after that they had mocked him, they took the robe off him, and put his own raiments on him, and led him away to crucify him. And as they came out, they found a man of Cretan, Simon by name. Him they compelled to bear his cross. Jesus must have been so weak that he couldn't carry his own cross, and somebody else had to help him. 
Could you imagine everything that Jesus went through for us before He was ever crucified? He was beaten. He was spit upon. He was mocked. They mocked Him. They said, King of the Jews. They mocked Him. But one day when He returns, they'll, they'll not mock Him anymore because He's not coming as a lamb. He's coming as a king, as a king of kings. And He'll rule with an iron rod. And that's in the book of Revelations. Chapter, verse 33 says, And when they were come unto a place called Golgotha, that is to say a place of skulls, they gave him vinegar to drink mingled with gall. And when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. And sitting down, they watched him there, and sit up over his head his uh, accursed accusation written. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. And that's why they crucified him, because Jesus said he was the Messiah, and uh, the Jewish people didn't believe it. They was looking for a king. They wasn't looking for a, a carpenter's son. Jesus was a, a carpenter's son, and uh, they didn't believe it, that uh, God had sent him. Then were, the, then were there two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and one on the left. And they that passed by reviled him, wagging their heads, and saying, Thou that destroyest the temple and built it in three days, save thyself. If thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. See, they told Jesus, mocking him, If he's the Son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise, also the chief priests mocked him with the scribes and elders say, He saved others himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. He trusted in God, let him deliver him now, if he will have him. For he said, I am the Son of God." The thieves also which were crucified with him cast the same, same in his teeth. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over the land unto the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, uh, ma, sabak, ta, na. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? I believe when he said that, I believe his Father God turned away from him because of the sin that was upon him. But uh, that's what I believe. But uh, God didn't forsake Jesus. That's just the beginning. Some of them that stood there when they heard that said, the man called for Elias, and straightway one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink. The rest said, Let be, let us see where Elias will come to save him. And when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielding up the ghost, and behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. This is what Jesus said would happen. He said, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. What this was, was it was a great big curtain in the temple. The priest would go beyond that curtain and he would sacrifice a lamb for your sins. But when Jesus died upon the cross, that curtain was ripped down and we no longer have to go to a priest for our, uh, our atonement of our sins. 
All we have to do is ask Jesus Christ to forgive us of all of our sins. So there's no, there's no person in between. It used to be that there was a priest in between. You had to go to that priest and then he went behind the curtain and put your sacrifice upon the altar. But that curtain's ripped away. So all we have to go, do is go straight to Jesus now. Verse 52, And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose, and came out of the graves after His resurrection, and went into the holy city, and appeared unto many. Now when the centurion and they that were with him watching Jesus saw the earthquake and those things that were done, they feared greatly, saying, Truly, this was the Son of God. Could you imagine what they just what they just done to the to the Son of God, and then they they realize what they've done. <coughs> Excuse me, that'd be an awful thing to do. But do we crucify Jesus in our own lives? Maybe God sends us to talk to somebody and we don't do it. Maybe we don't witness uh, to people like we should. Uh, are, are we ashamed of Jesus? I wonder how that makes Jesus feel when we don't mention His name. Does that crucify Him again? Does that make Him sad? Let's try to do the work of the Lord. It's what we need to do. Luke chapter 20. We'll go to Luke chapter 23, verse 39. This talks about the thieves on the cross that was crucified with Jesus. Chapter 23, verse 39. It says, this was when Jesus was on the cross before He died. It says, And one of the male fact factors which were hanged railing on Him saying, If thou be the Christ, save thyself. So you see here, one of them made fun of Jesus. And, uh, but but uh, the other didn't. But the other answering, rebuking him, said, Doest not thou fear God? See thou art in the same condition. Condemnation. And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man hath done nothing. So you see, the one thief, he realized who Jesus was. Jesus was a per perfect man. He was a perfect Lamb of God. But he realized, the thief did, that he was wrong, a sinner, and the other was a sinner. Verse 42, And it says unto Jesus, Lord, this is what the thief, the one thief said unto Jesus, verse 42. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shall thou be with me in paradise. So what happened to Jesus? Immediately when he died, he went to paradise. And uh, this thief went with him to paradise. Where is paradise? Paradise is in the lower parts of the earth. Let's go to Ephesians. Ephesians 4, 9. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descendeth is the same also that ascendeth up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ." He prepared all the disciples that they could do the same works He could do and they would preach His gospel after He was gone. But when Jesus died, He went to the lower parts of the earth first. 
He descended to Hades, into Abraham's bosom, and that place of comfort, and proclaimed liberty to those who had died in faith. He then took those believers with him to heaven. So you have paradise in the lower part of the earth, and then on the other side you had Hades. That was hell. And that's where uh, it says in the Bible the rich man was. He was in hell, and he looked across the gulf, and he seen uh, Lazarus in Abraham's bosom. And that's where he was. go to 1 Peter now. 1 Peter chapter 3. Uh, take me a minute to find it. Here we go. 1 Peter chapter 3. Verse First uh, Peter chapter three verse eighteen says, "For Christ also hath once suffered for our sins, for the just, for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, and that's where he was." He was in uh, the lower parts of the earth in Abraham's bosom in paradise. That's where Jesus went and preached. And it wasn't a place of torment or suffering. Paradise is a place of comfort. Chapter uh, verse 20 says, Which sometimes were disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls were saved by water. The like figure also unto to us, even baptism doeth also not save us, not the putting away of the filth or the flesh, but the answer of good consigns towards God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who is gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. So you see there, Jesus went into the lower parts of the earth after he was crucified. He preached to them in paradise, and then they all went up to heaven. Uh, that'd be like a resurrection there. And now Jesus is on the right hand of the Father. And if there's anything we need, we ask it in Jesus' name to the Father, and G God will grant it because of his word, his Son. So Jesus suffered for all of our sickness, so none of us should have to be sick. And, uh, and salvation, none of us should be lost because we have the Word of God here, the King James Bible. It's a road map through life that will help us. So I hope you learned something today. Jesus was crucified upon the earth in three days he spent in the lower parts of the earth, and then three days he, he arose, and he ascended to heaven. And now he's on the right hand of the Father. And uh, we need to just hang on till Jesus comes. We're going to have many afflictions and many trials, but God will deliver us through them all. We just ask for help in the name of Jesus. So thanks for watching The Cross on the Hill here in West Virginia. Do-do-do-do-do-do-do. do 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 do